Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the Drobo 5N. Drobo was nice enough to send it along for review, and I've been using it for quite some time. I moved over my storage from my older Drobo, I had an original Drobo, and this one is the 5N, so that means it's five drives, and it's also network-based. The 5N comes in at $499 to $549, depending on where you buy it, and that is without any drives you have the option to put five different drives in place, up to eight terabytes each, and that and what it does is pool your storage. And it creates one giant drive for you. Based on your storage, it can create redundancy. You can lose up to two drives and not have anything fail and you won't lose your data. Now this Drobo is a little bit different in that it's network-based. It also has the option to speed up the Drobo, although I haven't found the need for this, but you can add an a M SATA drive in the bottom to speed it up about three times what it actually is. But I really, like I said, haven't had any issues with that. The design of it is just like any other Drobo you've seen, but this one has the ability to hold five drives. And what you'll see is once you take the front magnetic cover off is that's where all the different drives go. And those five drives simply slot in, they're hot swappable, meaning you can pop them out while they're running and they just pop in a new one if they're bad. If you have a bad drive, You've got no worries as far as the storage goes. It keeps everything backed up. In fact, if you're playing a movie off it or you're reading some data off of it and a drive goes bad, it just keeps working. There's no problems there whatsoever. Swap the drive and it will rebuild the drive array and you'll have more drive space added. And I'll show you that in software in a little bit. So on the front, we have five indicator lights, one for each drive, and then we have some lights along the bottom. The lights along each drive are either green, orange, or red. Green means good, orange means it's getting full, and red means it's bad. The indicators along the bottom mean how full it is or how full the drive array is as a whole. So left to right, as it fills up, you run out of space, it fills more and more up. If a drive goes bad, you'll see that indicator change as well. On the back, you can see there's a fan in there to keep everything nice and cool. And we have a power plug, we have an on-off switch, and we have a gigabit ethernet port. In order to get everything set up, all I did was plug in my drives, plug it into the wall, plug it into my router, or in my case, uh, a switch, plug it into that, install the software on my Mac, and that was it. I was able to see it with the Drobo dashboard. Once your Drobo is set up and booted up and all set and ready to go, you just come over to your computer, Mac or Windows, install their Drobo dashboard, and you can use it to find any Drobo you might have attached to a computer or the network. So you can see this is attached to the network. I have it unlocked so we can take a look at it. And we have a few options. So let me go into this. And you'll see that I have all sorts of different drives in here. Now the nice thing is you can have different capacities up to eight terabytes each, uh, different capacities, different manufacturers. And there are some suggestions from Drobo on the Drobo website if you wanna see what they recommend. But you can see right now I've had an uptime of nine days and 22 hours, 28 minutes. So really nice there. You've got different options and that's pretty simple, pretty much it. I can go to each drive, see what kind of drive it is, and it gives me what information and what standing it's in. Everything's healthy right now and my capacity is pretty low. So if we go over to capacity, you'll see that we have 4.65 terabytes free. We have 639.41 gigabytes used for a total of 5.27. Now, obviously all of those drives combined equal more than that. So if we go to usage, you'll see that we have 7.27 terabytes actual. So we've got all of this extra drive space and you can see we're using almost two terabytes for protection. Now there's other protection options as well. We have dual redundancy protection. If I go under, under my Drobo settings in general, you'll see I can set it up for dual disk redundancy. Right now I have it up for single disk redundancy, but I don't have enough data on there that I think I'd lose anything if I lost a couple disks. And I've experienced that in the past in my old Drobo that only held four drives and I actually lost two of them and didn't lose any information. So uh, it's not necessarily guaranteed, but you've got those simple options there. Now the nice thing is, aside from this capacity, we also have apps here. Now we can set up shares like you would expect on a network. We also have tools, things like that, but we have Drobo apps. And this is where it becomes more of a traditional NAS where you can install applications. These applications are pretty nice actually. We have the My Drobo application and Drobo Access, which is a 99 cent phone app that allows you to access those shares. And I'll show you that in just a second. 
One of the newest things Drobo has is a Drobo Access app, and it's on the App Store, and you'll see right here it's Drobo Access, it's 99 cents, and what you do is you put in a server address. Now they give you this server address when you set it up through Drobo, you set up a username and password, and they give you the address that points to your Drobo. It's all encrypted and secure, and once you have that installed and ready to go, you can open the app. We'll just do it here, I'll show you, there it is. We'll open it up. It's going to connect back to my Drobo. You'll see there's family, and here's all my different folders with all my different files within them. You'll see there's YouTube videos, and I'll show you this folder on my computer as well, looking right at the Drobo folder also. Within that folder, you can see here's all my different videos. I can play them through here as long as the iPhone has that codec. Works really well. And then I can share. There's no file or, or folder shared yet. Or I can upload from here as well. Nothing recently uploaded from this device, but I can upload to it. And then you'll see there's settings. So if I want to turn on passcode and touch ID, I can. If I want instant uploads from my photos, I can do that. It's really very simple to use. So we can remotely access all of our things with the 99 cent app. We've also got all of these other options. So we've got Bash, we've got BitTorrent Sync. I'm using CrashPlan as a backup and it's actually configured. And this was a little bit interesting to get this to work. It wasn't a simple login. It was basically a strange configuration, editing two files on my Mac, two text files, pointing it to the Drobo and setting up crash plan and then pointing them back so that they back up my Mac. It's kind of a weird way to do that. Uh, hopefully they'll make that a little bit easier, but that's the most difficult thing I've seen of the entire thing. And that's only specific to crash plan at this point that I could find. You've got all these other options as well. So if you scroll down, you'll see I have wherever it is here, I have Plex installed and Plex acts as a media server. And you can see it says it organizes all of your personal media so you can access it and enjoy it. That means you can access it from a phone. There's some paid options from Plex if you're familiar with them, but if they're on your local network, you can access them from the newest Apple TV, from Roku boxes and other applications on an iPad, things like that. It's really nice. And it gives you the option to access whatever's on there as well. We'll continue to scroll down. You can set it up to be seen through iTunes as well. It's it's really got some great options. Transmission, we've got Unrar. Uh, we can use WordPress web software to create a blog straight off of this and use it kind of as a server as well for a web page. So it's really nice. You've got all these different options. And if I want to access them, just click on it, hit install, it automatically installs, and then it shows you how to set it up. So pretty nice there as well. If I go to tools, you'll see that I have just a couple of diagnostic tools where we can reset it, check for updates, things like that. So overall, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and it stays up at the top here and will show you any alerts on your computer if there's a problem. So if your drive starts to get too full, your drives as a whole get too full, or one starts to go bad, it will alert you and let you know. The noise of the Drobo is is pretty quiet, as quiet as you could expect for a normal fan to be along with five hard drives spinning all at once. It also does get a little bit warm, so you wanna make sure it's in a well-ventilated area to keep everything nice and cool. So don't just shove it in the back of a closet somewhere. Make sure that it's set up nice in an area with a lot of ventilation, but you can set it aside. Uh, I wouldn't recommend a desk just because it will vibrate that desk a little bit. On my desktop, you'll see that I have a few different drives and one of them is named Family, and that's this Drobo. I have it set up as a share under my shares. If I go in here, you'll see that I have Family and it's a share and there's some settings and you can create more than one share if you'd like. And it's ac accessed by any computer as just another drive. And as you can see, this is my YouTube videos and this is where I store all of my old YouTube videos that I've already uploaded. And I've stored them over the years in this place and they just stay here redundantly backed up. And then because I use online backup services, it actually backs this up to the cloud all by itself and I don't have to think about it. So it's a really great solution. I definitely recommend checking out Drobo. I'll leave a link to them in the description below, but if you've used Drobo or you've used someone else, let us know in the comments below what you think. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron, I'll see you next time.